and two Sorellas. He's investing heavily into the anti-air game, spending 360 points. Absolutely. Uh, that's, uh, matchups also quite interesting. Fifth, uh, ninth versus 39. No, wait, eight versus 39. No super forward deployment. No uh, OPTE 55s. So. It's a battle of the big birds, though. The A10 and SU25. Yeah. Uh, also, the APC warfare, actually. The M113 versus the BTRs as well. That might be a deciding factor. Yes. And the BMPs versus MP3s versus a lot of other ATGMs on the other side. But the BMP piece should be relatively decent against the M113 spam. It should. Uh... The BMP1s and the BMP3s should help out quite a bit there. I'm just uh, worried about the dragon spam. Uh, I think the BMP1s at least are going down to one, uh, one hit from the regular dragons. Uh, BMP trees should be fine though. Okay, I'm, I did speed up to the live, so I should be live now. Uh, oh, minutes. you're at three minutes. I'm at three twenty nine. Yeah, three exactly. Yeah, fits. Yeah, three thirty three, three thirty four, yeah. five six. Then we're synch synchronized. Nice. Uh, Phoenix is also doing the A cav start. Uh, well, uh, Wooden Box is using the KPVs. Uh, I think that favors Phoenix for the first minute or two at least. Yeah, this should be pretty interesting. The ACAFs are still quite nice, but the, the speed is a bit of an issue. Like, the Retretkas will be there faster in the UWATSs. Uh, can it, it doesn't look on. like uh, a wooden box is going that aggressive, though, if you look at his uh, deployment orders. Yeah, they're all pretty standard. Yeah. Most so... himself. A lot of AA. He's really afraid of the A-10s, it seems. Yeah. And he brought out Strellas, because I know Phoenix loves his... Um, uh, seed plane, his yeah. Seed plane, the Raven. The Ravens. So, that should be interesting. Conquerors in the rear. Uh, I like the placement of the Conquerors. Uh, they're at good enough of an angle to be able to side shot uh, the stuff in the middle forest. Yeah. And on the other side we got some M60s. A lot of M60s actually. Wait, who wins between M60s and P62s? The M60s, right? Uh, the M60s should win, uh, but um, it depends if it's uh, the ATGM variant or not. Yes. Uh, the advantage of the M60 is the armor. It has lower pen, but it has uh, three more front armor. No, and, it, has, know, it's, it has uh, the same front armor. It has the same front armor, but the, the accuracy oh, is the rate it? of fire. Yeah, both have 10. But the, the rate of fire is just so much Oh, higher. sorry, I was, I was thinking of the T55A2. That's seven. Yeah. No, the T62 uh, just have too little rate of fire, though I think, and the accuracy is a big difference as well. Like sixty versus yeah. forty-five percent. It's that's quite brutal. And no auto loader on six rate of fire means that uh, if you're stressed, you're gonna be at a snail space of uh, firing. Yeah, T62s can be brutal, and like when you get a prolonged engagement with them, they. <laughs> They just fall apart so quickly. Yeah. But with 45% accuracy, they're also not that reliant on just sniping anything. Okay. Uh, Here we go. Wooden box on the left side in red coming in with a pretty interesting spread of forces. Not that much infantry, but a lot of support equipment. Whilst on the other side, we have a lot of bread and butter infantry and tanks with both sides bringing in. No. Yeah, four versus five recon units, but. I am, however, worried about uh, the lack of AA on the Phoenix side. Yes, you have the F uh, F F-16s, but uh, they're going to get smacked by either the SU-27 or the MiG-23s. Uh, yeah, F-16 fighters. The biggest issue with them is that they just run out of missiles so quickly. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. Oh, they might just get snagged 
by some Osas here. The amount of... He, I don't think he expects that much AA. No. Yeah. Like, he's kind of lucky of getting one out of there. With yeah. Two o directly flying over two Osas and a mid-24 AA. I think there were some line of sight issues with the buildings and forest there that helped him out. Yes. Yeah, but already losing one and not getting the helicopter, which is pretty brutal. He's doing the early, Phoenix is doing the early CV threat though, so it might force a wooden box to go on the offensive if uh, he follows it up with two more CV bites. Mm, doesn't do so just yet. On the other side, no CVs either though, so the plus three will be there for a good while. We'll get a couple oh. of hundred points. F-16 still around, but if 4 AA pieces there and the Mi-24 also in a secure spot landed, this F-16 should just go home, get a reload, conquerors trying to do things. Do you think we will, th what do you think will be the game plan here for Phoenix? Will we see artillery wars? Or will this be it? I believe this is coming down to M60 spam and going aggressive up in either the north or middle part of the map. I think he's gonna go aggressive in within a couple of minutes now. Because Ace's strength is within the first 10 minutes of the game. Uh, well, 39th uh, should scale a lot better. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. But now Wooden Box brings in two CVs. So we'll get more spots than Phoenix soon, so the advantage that Phoenix gets right now will fall apart relatively quickly. Um, M60 is uh, coming out in big numbers though. Yeah, as expected. You should have 8 uh, M60s in his deck, so he has 5 on the map now. 6? You should have 2 more that you should be able to deploy. And on the other side, no T-80BVs are still around, so yeah, the T-62s are outclassed. Conquerors are dangerous, but you can survive at least a single hit of those. Mm, so you're not dying instantly, and you have smoke on the F-60s, which is pretty helpful. And dealing with these as well. Uh, the ACAFs also surprisingly defensive, like they didn't try to do anything fancy. Oh, will he lose his military places though? Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Bit too aggressive there with the unload. It's always a nasty problem. Uh, also, just standard military police, so their fighting power is not amazing, as they only have M60s and M16s. But the also not deployed in the building. Uh, listening, it's uh, survivability a lot. The Strella Motor Strucky push down there is... A pretty opportune one though, because that is not a combo that has a lot of firepower either. Like, yeah, the ACAV alone can't pin it down if it's staying far enough away from the Motostrolki, as you see now, so that push should retreat soon as well. A wooden box always someone for a lot of flanking maneuvers. Like, a wooden box likes to be a bit sneaky and likes flanking maneuvers. Uh, but. What I would like to see from Phoenix now is uh, trying to cut off uh, the bottom part of Bravo, so uh, a wooden box can't support his uh, motorcycle against Rella units. You could either do that by redirecting his tanks that are idling at the moment, or uh, and combine that with the dragon and push them up into the forest uh, in front of the buildings. Yeah, there's currently no initiative on the side of Phoenix, which. I would say is a problem, like all the moves currently coming out of a wooden box side. Phoenix only play so far in this game was the failed attempt of killing the Mi-24 at the beginning. And then it's just sitting in the positions, in defensive positions, and that is not good enough. With 8, we need to see a bit more. Oh, we got some backline action with RPOs and BTRs on the uh, back forest of Phoenix. He has responded with a Cobra though. Yeah, the Cobra is doing pretty well and the BTRs seem like they might run into an M60 there as well. Which won't welcome them. Ah, Motostrucky Melis though. Can they get some good hits in there? The Caparel is in a really bad spot though. It's gonna get uh, sniped by uh, BMP3. 
Yeah, by a BMP or by one of the yeah. medis, medis gets the kill. And that is pretty brutal because Chaparral is your best and the helicopter in that deck. The range of them are, is allowing you to get a really nice umbrella up against those Mi-24s. And if you lose too many air defense units, the Mi-24s can be really annoying against you. Uh, Phoenix really needs to concentrate his M60s and um, uh, do an attack somewhere uh, with a force concentration. Currently, it just bleeds out. Yep, yeah, uh, a game plan is lacking here on the blue side. There's not really an idea on how to make this game work at the moment. It feels like it's all solid micro, but no outplays. And a wooden box can equal that micro, so you need to have some way of how you get ahead of him, not just throw normal issues at him. Ah, but I really, might enjoy, get I really enjoy a wooden box's uh, force composition though, in his push. Uh, his BMP's trees are deadly enough to kill the M60s, and with the tank backing it up, that draws the fire from the tank, meaning that the tank is basically nullified. Yeah, but you were saying um, 8 needs to be early game. Phoenix is going for the one composition, I would say, that makes it somewhat viable in late game, it seems, though, with the M110 already out and already firing. The question is, can Phoenix stay on top against counterfire, or will he ever be caught by the Akatsias? Because Akatsias can be pretty efficient there as well. So both sides have good self propelled guns, but the M10s outclass... And more tense all class the Akatsia in the long run. So uh a wooden box is probably also the best artillery spammer in the game though. He he uses map packs and can see where the CV are just by looking at the opponent's name because he recognizes the patterns where people place their CVs. So I'm guessing that we're gonna get the C V snipe in within ten minutes from the artillery. So a drawn out artillery battle with a wooden box is quite dangerous. But it seems to what we're heading into here. Like, Phoenix seems to want to play air and artillery, which is an interesting composition of trying to f play this game out. Cluster Bomber coming in to get some BMP3s, get some hits there. No losses so far. No SU-27 on the battlefield. Mi-24AA gets one missile, but that doesn't deal enough damage to really do much to the F-16. And the Osas are all in the middle. Still not a super effective air run, but, I mean, it got out, so... It's fine, as long as you deal some damage there. As I said, the F-16 is going re on a dangerous route there. The Osas would have moved north, they could have gotten some shots off there. I think Phoenix's is, uh, Phoenix is, uh, hold on uh, the bottom town is about to collapse. I'm looking at uh, the amount of forces coming into the forest. The bottom town uh... with the Saperi RP... But there's not that much there, there's a pin down Mother Spelke. It's not that much, but there's not much defending it either. I mean, there's... And when you first get a foothold into the town, it's quite hard to dislodge you again. There's three M60s on the other side, and two ACAVs, and more seem... scouts and ACAVs in the rear, so... They Question seem is... to be quite stationary, though. That's my biggest takeaway. That they've been set up in defensive positions and have been left there. If Phoenix are able to maneuver them, they can be quite deadly. But if they stay in their positions, they can easily be smoked off. Also, big question in my eyes is, can the M110 get some shots out me down there and pin the infantry down? Or what is the job of the artillery right now? Like, both sides keeping their artillery idle right now. Uh, and those can swing fights like that with one or two well-placed shots. Standing down, an aggressive push. ACAF moving over the open, most likely might run into the T-62 there though. But helping out against the Motostrucky, yeah, the ACAFs are pretty nice for their job. So now the T-62 has line of sight. The ACAF is down to a crawl with its speed. The T-62 finishes the job. But more of wooden box are being A wooden box is sending out a lot of AA though on the map. So if Phoenix is going to continue with his air spam, it's going to end badly. It's... Well, I think what you want to do, if you want to play this long run like Phoenix does, seem to want to do is get more artillery, 
and then get the Raven to just fly on the edge. Uh, yeah, being shot at by one or two missiles, so it doesn't die because with its ECM it can't su be su survive that, and then hit it with artillery. Yeah, using it as a spotting service. That's a good shot. Uh, I see Phoenix is firing up his eminent A. He is focusing at the clump of few units uh, in the lower part of Bravo. If he stuns those down, then and he can get well, line of sight of it. counter battery. I could see it is moving uh, though. Yeah, a wooden box yeah. is on top of the game there. I I wouldn't go for counter battery. I feel like with M one or ten that most of the time is a waste. Just the only viable time to counter battery is when you're doing a big burst all over the map at once, so your opponent is uh, overwhelmed and forgets about his artillery. Other than that, uh, I think counter battering against a competent player is a waste of time and ammunition. Yeah. And pinning down those tanks in the forest down at Bravo could allow what you were asking for earlier, as then maybe your, the M60s can push push in on top of it, and then you yeah. have this forest, which then can work on cutting off Gulf slowly but surely, and cut off the reinforcements that are pushing towards Delta as well. But the reinforcements that Phoenix brought into the south should suffice to hold on to Delta at least. Like, I don't think he will be easily overwhelmed there, though there's more BMP-3s now on the way. Those get into... A wooden box is also applying a lot of pressure on the opposite side of the map at the moment, with uh, only a motor stroll can a T-62, but it's uh, forcing a lot of response from Phoenix. He's calling in a Cobra as well as uh, regular engineer dragons, on top of uh, two fire teams. Yeah, the, his ACAVs are still a nuisance though to a wooden box, killing off a red dragon in the north, most likely, in a second or two. And might be threatening the T-62 as well, as the T-62s might spot that too late. And there's... Yeah, the ACAV plus scout there can be scary. Cobra coming in as well, but there are enough Strellas and Cubes on the battlefield. There's enough AA for sure to <laughs> stop helicopters at the moment. Oh. That's a really bold move of the scout. Uh, the ACAV gets caught in the north. And well, the artillery did some damage. T-62's damaged. BMP's killed off by the MR-10. MR-10 will continue its fire. I would like to see the MR-10s focus down uh, the conquers that they have seen uh, been shooting from the same spot twice now. Uh, well, now to get those off the map. Yeah, Conqueror is always a good, like, in general, slow anti-tank teams, good target. But the coop is not a bad target either there. So let's see if that can die, as that is an oh. unarmored vehicle. And the first shot was pretty nice. Second shot doesn't land as well, but the oh. coop is really slow and stunned. So the third shot might do the job. Yes, it Ooh, does. That's a nice one. And slowly but surely cleaning off the coops of the map will really enable airplay again. Though, in the fighter fight, if a wooden box can counter it and kill off the Chaprals and Stinger teams on the other side, a wooden box might be able to just win the air fight in the end as well, with SU-27s versus the F-16s. And But yeah, we'll see how that goes. It seems to be like both sides are up for a long game here. Nobody is going for an all-out assault. Nobody is going for a super daring attack anytime soon, I would expect. So we'll Fe see Fe how long we are in Phoenix game. also doubled up on his artillery now. So he has two M110s out. Uh, he's t targeting Conqueror Steam and tanks over at uh, uh, Golf. Meanwhile, uh oh! oh! We have a really daring play from a wooden box, though. Mi-24 on the hunt for the M110s. F-16 cluster oh. flies above of it, but doesn't see it. And the Mi-24 will get the supply helicopter. That one is for sure dead. Question is, how quickly will Phoenix react? Phoenix hasn't seemed to... Doesn't have to seem spot... Uh, uh, no, no spot yet, just yet. But the M110 is in the forest. So it is invisible. To the Mi-24 at the moment, but that M60 is gone. 
So it paid or already by killing the supply and the M160. If it can get the M more tens though, that would be an absolute game changer. Then Phoenix oh, has to go. CV. Phoenix just got uh, an income tick now, so he might be able to respond within a couple of seconds. But I don't think he has re really noticed he, he, it at he, all. He, he hasn't noticed, he by both fire teams, he hasn't noticed. Like the way he moved in, he hasn't tried to move away with his M1R10s or anything. Okay, Mortar is getting shot now by the Mi-24. Oh, that's a really good uh, artillery barrage on a uh, uh, wooden box of units. Interesting yeah. amount of smoke. Finally, an F-16 comes in for the Mi-24. So the M1R10s will stay alive. A wooden uh, box could have also used the spotting of the M1R10s to counter battery, maybe with the Akatsia, but won't be able to get the kill on the mr 10 Still good kills for the M M24, but could have been way, way worse here for Phoenix. <coughs> but still, my issue still stands. Why are the M60s uh, not being moved to react to what's happening on the south part of the map? Yeah, artillery uh, there not coming in, but not enough support for the infantry that Phoenix had sent in there. Cluster Bomber now trying to find the target, but there's way too much AA for that to just move that in as recklessly as Phoenix did there. And a lot of infantry has been let off there by a wooden box. The smoke is not doing super much for Phoenix. Like, I think Phoenix's uh, fire teams on the upper part of the map is gonna uh, have a bad uh, encounter with three multi circle squads before they are able to unload. Ooh, that uh, could be the case, though he seems to be focused on that part of the map right now with an F-16 flying around there. These F-16 endeavors are really, really daring though with the amount of AA around. And with that your long game plan might not work out. Like, if you want to kill off the enemy's defenses with your mr 10s to then bring in your airplane later, you still need airplanes to do that. And if you plead them all out early on, that doesn't work anymore. And the Ah, the fire teams now get unloaded. Okay, last second unload, but still in front of the Mortar Strelke. Mortar Strelke in range of the M113. So, yeah. not the case think there. Phoenix either needs to deploy more Chaparrals or get some Ihawks out on the field. He's in a really dangerous territory now uh, where two SU-25s can wreck his whole setup. Yes, his M113 get rid of some Strellas and some supply trucks in the north. The last Strella won't fall there. And his Cobra might help out cleaning up the infantry there, but if... Oh, he tried to CV snipe with his Cobra on uh, Golf. We that also, failed. We also have the first T-80BV out now, but there's no M1A1s on the other side just yet. So the wooden box now gets the upper hand when it comes to tank class on the battlefield. And... Phoenix sending in more infantry in the south, but they're still unsupported. Like, only some MR-13 with them. But on the other side we have BMP-3s and BMP-1s. Which are just way more efficient. And the unloading... Oh, the unloading spots are just way too ambitious. Time and again here. Engineers dying before they can get anywhere. It also looks like a wooden box is trying to sneak a CV into Delta. The Rangers uh, at least got a better unload there, so they sniped some BMPs, so the CV might not make it in there. But BMP3s and T62s now getting rid of some M60s, and as I said, the T80 BV is there, and that is outclassing the M60s by a long shot. I would also like to see the T80 BV getting uh, pushed up a bit further, as its line of sight is quite uh, restricted at the moment. BMP3, can it get the ATGM in? No. Okay, good kills there by for Phoenix against the BMP3s, but the southern situation is just really rough. More engineers coming in, and more planes flying in, but it seems like a wooden box really prepared for Phoenix's airplay here. And Phoenix hasn't adapted to that yet, still bringing in as many planes as he usually would. Gets the TADBV at least, but I don't know if it's worthwhile pleading so many planes for it. So F-16 somehow gets out, as it gets pretty lucky with the missile interaction. And Wooden Box has an empty coop by now. 
no supply truck up there. But it's really daring what Phoenix is doing with his planes. I would like to see Phoenix cut his losses down at uh, Delta, set up in defensive position to, uh, along the town, let the wooden box come in and overextend, and then attack instead of this slow dripple in, where you just deal out uh, over time. Uh, that's some really good uh, artillery usage on the Osa. Uh, it sadly got moved uh, really fast. Yeah, the wooden box was quick on the counter reaction this time there. Engineers coming in. Will they get out alive out of their vehicles? Where's the unload situation position? Ooh, okay. It seems like they just get out before they get blown up. Yeah, just got out both. Losing the M113s, but at least the engineers will live. And with four rangers next to them, they have some firepower there. It's also a case of you actually almost value the M113s more, uh, more than the infantry at the moment with how the heavy machine guns and the armor situation of the M113s are. So losing so many M113s is a huge loss in fire support. Yeah, but at least he has the smoke engineer play now on hand. Well, not if you don't stop them for throwing the TNT, but... Oh, I don't think he has a vision. No, he's using move orders. No! Okay. <laughs> you need to use those attack or uh, move orders when you're using the smoke play. Well, they might get some TMTs up there. Well, no, smoke is helping out his opponent there. But yeah. at least pushed a wooden box back there. Wooden box maybe also not as daring as it could have been with the push in the south. Um, trying to be slow and methodical, but didn't uh, realize how weak... Phoenix was there for a while, and now Phoenix has a good amount of support there again, whilst the infantry of the wooden box is basically melted away, so the T-62s that are coming in for it might not have anything to spot for them. Raven in for the first time. Ah. It got one. It got a uh, coop. Yeah, got a coop in the north, got out without any damage on top of it. Osas at least got away, but still, kill is a kill, so this is setting up more danger for a wooden box in the future, as Strellas are really inefficient against planes. You don't want to rely on Strellas when it comes to battling enemy air spam. And when we get around to see more A-10s or so on the battlefield, this might become bad for a wooden box here. It's also a good omen to see the seed plane coming in now, because uh, since it didn't take any damage, I think the turnaround is less than a minute, so you can really keep spamming that out. It's uh, one of those tools that snowballs really hard if you first get going. Yes, Northern Battle really tense there. BMP3s coming around, getting some ATGMs into the M60, but uh, Bradley keeps the Motostrelkis at bay pretty well. Chapral snipes a Me2 recon helicopter. Should be a good defense for Phoenix here, as an M1A Brims is around as well. Though that M60 might be dead. Ah. I would like a wooden box to take a breathing break now and uh, reset his forces before doing anything else. Uh, the last 10 minutes he has bled more forces than uh, Phoenix has. Yes. Uh, if, if he continues this, he might run dry. Yeah, I like his idea of a setup for the southern push the amount of t62s there is nice but you obviously need more before you can go there again and the push in the north came uncoordinated like that push in the north would have been amazing if pressure would have been put up in the south at the same time but this way phoenix could put the full attention to it and it was pretty easy to micro against it in that case gets the m one at least, as the T-62 gets it with its ATGM. Well, it's the North gets some reinforcements as well. Got I would like to see a bit more resupply going from a wooden box as well. It has a lot of units that are either empty or close to empty of their ATGMs and on low HP. He lost a, lot of, uh, uh, a couple of supply trucks on the front line, which did hurt him a bit. Like, a couple of them were hit by artillery. I think the amount of rerolls is nice, but yeah, you have to get them to the right places. Like... I think the smoke push is attempting now is ill-advised. With the amount of stuff he's going to head into. Yeah. He only mm. really has one tank there. 
as opposed to Phoenix, it's four tanks and a good amount of infantry plus a Bradley. Yeah, and three BTR sixties on their own won't achieve anything there. Don't know what that idea is. That's... It's an uh, Q attack order that was given on everything at the same time, I believe. No, it wasn't. They they got the order way earlier. The motor truck has just started moving, so that yeah. is rough. Yeah, BTR six is already down, and four motor truck is slowly moving in there. Most likely won't change that either. No TNT on any of these for infantry fights. And, yes, and as you spoke of earlier, uh, if you had done that at the same time as pushing uh, the south point, uh, I think it could be more effective. Raven went a bit too deep this time. So Phoenix loses one of the Ravens. Didn't get a kill for it. No, Osas are still alive. So that is quite brutal. MR tends though, get some good hits in. Not quite able to get the mortars just yet, but they're trying nope. hard there. But losing the Raven is making it easier to play against the air spam for a wooden box in the long run for sure. And Phoenix now way over aggressive in the south. Like that infantry push is not getting anywhere, especially not with a move order on everything. Like those engineers with the move order once more coming around. On the other side, still Saperi RPO waiting, so they're not half bad on CQC either. That's a lot of losses that you can't afford at this stage, as Phoenix in the south. The Phoenix in the south is completely bled dry now. No tanks, no infantry. That was a really unfortunate move. Similar, like, similar or even worse than what happened to Wooden's box center there, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you take a look at the units on the map, uh, a wooden box have more units on the map, but more of the, those units are support units, meaning that uh, in a head-to-head -head combat situation, I think Phoenix is gonna have the edge at the moment, well, especially in the center of the map. Yes, he has them in the center, but I don't know when he plans to move there, but the wooden box seems to be on the attack in the south. Okay, loses a couple Ooh. of units to the F-16, gets the F-16 though. And the T-62 versus an F-16 is a trade you always take every day of the week. T-62s are pretty cheap, whilst the cluster bombers are relatively cheap cluster bombers, but they are still lower numbers and... The T-80BV of a wooden box is living really dangerous at the southern push. Uh, uh, it's heading really close into that uh, 84 squad. Oh yeah. So it, the question is, how does it move in there? With frontal armor? Oh. Ooh, side armor, side armor. Oh no. Yeah, it's so it's so in full side armor. Oh, it's gonna die. Oh, it managed to turn in time. Half-life. No, it didn't turn in time. It got its half-life half damage on the 9 side armor. Like, that's the... TADBVs at least have somewhat decent side armor, but... Yeah, didn't go the second shot there because the AT-14 ran out of ammo. So, <coughs> it will survive for now. Good quick reaction with the smoke. So it was not quite needed, but the TADBV should instantly retreat up to the Ural in the north, get repaired. And Ito getting pinned down in the center. M1A1 finally coming out. Those trade pretty favorably, favorably against the TADBVs if you get them into gun range. So, that is nice. Uh, but the northern infantry fights, or yeah, going way better for a wooden box versus the fire If team a wooden board. box can't deal with the two Corvals coming in there, he might get a real punch through now. Oh yeah, all the Strollers are die dead there, right. They were all god god. I thought there was still a Strella there, but yeah, without a Strella, this might be troublesome. More are being brought in, but they won't arrive within the next two minutes or so. Well, it's another Seed Raven is flying around here. I would really like to see Phoenix move up a recon into the middle just to poke and get the information. He haven't put anything forward in the middle section uh, so far this game, meaning that he is uh, completely blind to what's going on in the middle section of the map. Oh, the Osa's not turning on to counter the F-16 and the SU-27 got overwhelmed there. It wouldn't box a bit too panicky there, I think, on the single fighter by. You know that the enemy has a lot of airplanes, so you need to react with 
at least pairs, if not tri triplets, of planes of yourself to counter that. Because one versus three, you always lose. Not, no matter the quality of your plane. Could have been an F-15 and you still most likely would have lost that fight. Okay, Phoenix is doing zoom push in the middle now. Uh, this could be the breakthrough the game has needed. Yeah, the forces there of a wooden box are really thin. And the northern push got completely decimated by the cluster bombers. Motostrelki still might get DAA there. That could be quite nice if a wooden box can get more airplanes out afterwards. Killing off the two Shrapralts. The strength about wooden box playstyle is that uh, your opponent will believe that you have a lot more on the map when you're playing so aggressive the whole time. Uh, so Phoenix might not even realize that he has a slight advantage in units at the moment. Well, I, I would not even call it a slight advantage at the mo moment anymore. As it's in, uh, quite huge, I would agree. As in the south, most of the tanks are dead as well. Strella's finally coming up to deal with Toe Cobra, but Toe Cobra did some good damage to that infantry pushing in there. The wooden box pushed the CV finally into the zone at Delta, got a couple of points out of it, but the Toe Cobra dealt with it relatively quickly as well. So, yeah, that Toe Cobra still pretty good. Used up all its 20mm ammo, so it gets bullied by the Saperi on the ground right now. Which is kind of hilarious. I'm just curious about where is the SU-25 and where is the A-10s. Uh, they are such powerful units that they should, uh, should have their usage, in this, especially in this game. Uh, where uh, Phoenix now has been able to whittle down a lot of the AA with a wooden box, which opens the map up for A-10 usage. Yes, it Which could be the final lane of the, in the coffin. Phoenix also trickling in similarly to what the wooden box did earlier there in the middle, losing a couple of infantry units already leading up a bit. But the wooden box is pushing the north, might work out big time now. At least Phoenix secured the Chaprals, moved them a bit further south, but there is now Strellas again with that push with the T62s, and there's only one M1A1 on the other side. That's still an M1A1, but the rest of the northern flank of Phoenix looks really vulnerable. You might get into a snipe situation with the military police and a CV if it survives. Yeah, Motostrelki trying their best to hold it off. M1A1 won the fight against the T80BV, with one hit point remaining though. So, oh. that was a fight on the edge. But Toe Cobra gets gone. Bradley defending to the north as well with some Tokes. But we see another plane dying. Trellas. No, what was that plane? Kinda missed it. Uh, I think it was. Uh, it looks like an F-16. Okay, we have Raven coming around again, but yeah, Strella's trying to hit it, but Strella's with 40 accuracy against 60 ECM. Chances of doing Fe any damage there are pretty low. And Phoenix reinforcements is getting sniped as well on the way in. Well, it's the wooden box. Is really low around Golf and Delta again. The Strellas there are the only thing on the front line. That's not what you want on the front line. Wooden Box's aggression throughout the game is really... One or two levels too high. Like, a couple of these attacks were pretty ill-advised. T-62 is now getting overwhelmed by the M1A1 in the north as well. And it... There's basically nothing left here right now for a Wooden Box. And Phoenix still is up in points, so... Phoenix should push. Because I think this should be a draw, but I'm still. This is going to be a draw. Uh, I think Phoenix now just needs to stop reinforcing Delta. Just have the units here already have there. Secure Delta, bring the rest into center, and just push him out. Yes. He has an overwhelming amount of uh, units now, which he should realize with how the game has gone. Yes, if he can get that second M1A1 back up to repairs, then put a bit of infantry in front of it. Those M1, two a M1A1s on their own should defeat everything that is on the other oh, side. Oh, is it going down? Oh, Last second smoke. 
That was clutch. That I would like to see the full HP M1 go and challenge the T62. That's a free firing, or both of them. Yes, I also there is a supply M35 up there in the rear, so I wish the other M1A1 would just go back there and repair. But the BMP once struggled with the AKF and the Toe Cobra. That's reliving the hero unit in this matchup. It does them so much work for uh, Phoenix. Yes, and one box once more tried to be sneaky with a Saperi Comrade in the south, but. There is a lot of blue wall coming from the other side, and Phoenix also brings in the CV now for a push towards Golf, Oof. which might work out as well. The M1 A1 went down. That's rough. Yeah, should have retreated a while ago. The Motor Striking Medi is there pushing forward. T62 coming in as well, but there's an I2 and an M1 A1 in their way. And that M1 A1 needs to eat a lot of those suck clothes. 9M117 ATGMs before it goes down. I'm also questioning the amount of uh, commander uh, that a wooden box have bought this game. I think I counted seven so far on a three point uh, map. Oh, uh, that's Phoenix, a lot of Phoenix. Uh, unit. <laughs> that would have been rough getting, giving away too many, a couple of free points there, but Phoenix reacts in time, gets the CV back in there, gets it away from the more striking medis, and those are basically the last remaining units in the center there for a wooden box. So afterwards, Phoenix with an A-click should be able to clean everything out for the last couple of minutes. There's the SU-25. I think this is way too late. Yeah. With the limited amount of AA that you that Phoenix can bring around, and with you also having superior fighter, you could absolutely go for an air war and win with 39th. But we didn't see that at all. Uh -huh. Woodenbox should also know how much AA Phoenix has since he had uh, ha had uh, two planes go down to his AA. Uh, so he should have an indication of that it isn't that much. Yeah, Southern fight is going pretty brutally. BMP3 is now arrived on the front line and the Pirate Kim 84 is not quick enough on getting those down. So Woodenbox actually will win that fight but lost the CV beforehand so can't really get up on it and get any more points out of Delta, and with only 1 minute 30 remaining, this might be the final result when it comes to points, because I don't see anyone getting anybody else out of any zone within 1 minute now. I believe this is gonna be a draw. I have no idea what the current Uden it, calculations for it is. It's, um... It's usually 10% uh, within your opponent's uh, value, plus uh, some base value. I don't know the base value, but if you get uh, two points and your opponent get one, it's still a draw. Yeah. It's quite a hidden formula, but there is something on about 10%. Is it getting hit? Yeah. But it doesn't get the CV. I'm just CV looking there. at how much work that last SU-35 did uh, while it still was alive. It did huge amounts, so not bringing that in uh, 20 minutes ago was a big mistake, in my opinion. Yeah, SU-25 and Mi-24 spam combined with some, hel uh, with some help from the air could have absolutely overwhelmed Phoenix's air defenses, I would say. Yeah. I also would reel in the aggression at least two, if not three steps. Uh, you need a good combined arms set up uh, for that aggression to work against uh, an opponent on uh, death row, especially. Uh, oh yeah, we have a I feel like here. a wooden box only had uh, two thirds of his combined arms at all times when he was attacking. He lacked like the, all, uh, always that one component to making the push succeed. Still, I would say that was a well fought draw in the end for a wooden box when we look at the kills yeah. like making phoenix so scared that phoenix started the aggression in the center way too late i mean the amount of kill death ratio difference tells you a lot there that those points should have been enough to get a victory out of it but wooden box kept the composure up on the front line kept phoenix scared and got 
making it on a lovely, lovely draw here in the end, which is the first one I think we had this season, so that is interesting. Yeah, I believe so as well. I would uh, like uh, to see a wooden box move his uh, AA more as well. Uh, he lost, if you look at the kid, lost feed, and as you saw in game, uh, Phoenix were able to spot his AA when they shot at his planes and just uh, nuke uh, them with artillery because uh, Owen Box didn't move them. So if he keeps moving his uh, anti air, I think his AA net would be impregnable at uh, the 30 minutes mark. Yeah, maybe. But let's see, what are the hero units here? We have Cobra with a good amount of kills, some M60s. The MR tents did pretty well for themselves. Um, yeah, both killing off two AA pieces, both killing off a good amount of conquerors or BMPs. So that was a solid investment. ACAFs, though. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was for sure his uh, hero unit this game. It the, That one ACAF stopped the uh, first push on its own, more or less. Yeah, killing off a BMP3 and two T62s. And killing off two infantry units, those ACAS are just nasty, nasty, nasty. From Phoenix, I want to see more flexible gameplay. Move your units more around, don't place them, have them stationary. Try to move the tanks to where the action is happening. Because how a wooden box is playing is that he will always try to be aggressive at all times. So if you can always meet that aggression with a couple more units, you're going to build up a huge force of, uh, after a while, which you can just A-click over a whole map and uh, win the game. Yeah, Phoenix's playstyle feels a bit too vanilla, I would, ex uh, would describe it. Like, it's all solid basics, but there's just that one edge, that one idea missing that is holding it getting it up to the next level and that's yep. why he gets a good kd but he can't form it into a victory here in the end because there was just not that one base idea where like like oh yeah i want to push in the late game or i want to win that way like yes the airplay obviously was part of it but it was not fully fleshed out in his mind it seems it seems like and then you just never know when to push if you play it like that like, I have that also sometimes when I don't really think about how the matchup looks and what I should do, that I'm then just going from fight to fight and never realizing what opportunities I was missing out on or yeah. what I should have done. And I think a lot of that comes down to realizing how much you actually kill. That you, you need to keep some sort of track in your head of how are the point difference in this game going. It does need to be on the dot, but it should be within like 1,000 plus minus. Uh, am I winning or am I losing? Points wise, because that has a lot to say to re realize, oh, if I'm up 2,000 points and my opponent keeps throwing stuff at me, that will likely mean that he doesn't have a defensive line set up. And doing those realizations are key to understand. Okay. Yeah. But his seed and artillery certainly paid off. Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, his idea was base, uh, late game, but he never played it around in like a. Like, if you want to play late game, you also have to have an idea of what your late game push looks like. And we never saw that consolidated. Like, it was. Oh, yeah, I react in the early game, and then I still play reactive in the late game. I go, get good trades, but then. Like, I always, when I say I play late game, I have that idea around the 30 minute marks, I want to have a push assembled in the middle or on the flank. I go with that. And we didn't see that in this game. I also would like to see more M1 A1s if you're going for that late game. Having two on the map is just too few if you're uh, playing around for late game. I'm curious to see what they're doing for their second game. If they're going with. Uh... Uh, similar divisions, or if you're getting another playstyle going. Yeah, it will be really cool. I 
I do like uh, the helicopter play of Phoenix this game. I felt that it was uh, quite effective at stomping down a wooden boxes uh, uh, pushers where he lacked AA. Placing those Cobras in a safe position where you could uh, easily uh, shoot down the infantry and then pull back and reload and repeat. Yeah, the defensive play of Phoenix in that game was pretty good. Like, he never got pushed out of any position, really. Like, outside, uh, uh, maybe just in the late game in the north, in that forest, he lost a bit in the middle, but his CV wasn't there, so he was able to give up that position. And every other offensive of a wooden box just ran into granite, and then the only losses that Phoenix really took were to a bit of cheese in the real line, or when he tried to mediocre offensive, first, of offensive yeah. play himself. But basically, on every other move, his defensive play was solid. A wooden box needs to get another level of aggression together if an aggressive play like this should work out in the second in game number two. But as I said, and like, also aggressive play usually works if it's not predictable that you're getting overall on that spot you don't expect. The thing about uh, Death Row, though, is that there are three corridors where you can fight. You either fight on the upper part against the forest, you either fight in the middle, or you fight a delta, or a golf. Meaning that uh, you could, uh, when 20 minutes of the game has passed, you already have set up defensive positions from all those spots. Meaning that continuing to just throwing stuff into the meat grinder is unlikely to pay off. Especially if you do it with such classic unit formations. Like, there was no fancy change from the beginning. Like, it was T-62s, BMP-3s, and Motostrakis from start to finish. Like, the composition never changed. It was never, oh yeah, this time we tried with 5 Mi-24 from above, or we throw in all my SU-25s yeah. in this one. So, the, the composition to counter it also never had to change, which is a big one as well. Really big one. And let's see what they will bring out for game number two. As we're coming around to it. And it didn't seem like they were bleeding dry either with their decks, so they might be, uh, be smart to adjust their decks uh, somewhat. As it looks like they were still spamming infantry at the end there. You mean getting a bit more veterancy in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is a Big thing that you have that is a, that can improve your feeling of the game a lot, like just calculating the amount of points you have in your deck and looking at the amount of points you get within a game and then comparing that. Like in Steel Division, I know that's also an issue that a lot of Steel Division 2 players have in 1 that they just build super deep decks, but with the time limit, you don't need to do that, you just need to yeah. get the sharp at knife that is exactly perfect for 40 minutes and then gets you over the finish line like my decks are always next to bleeding try in the at the 40 minute mark but yeah you need to get there i'm of the opinion that infantry should be dry at the 40 minute mark if you're playing like a bog standard game your tanks should be dry and then you can have all your units left because they're more like specialized tools that you want to have no matter what if that makes sense so I might have a lot of air airplanes left, for example, one game, while I spent all my artillery, or other games I have all my artillery left while I spent all my air tab, uh, meaning that I don't aim for that uh, 10k uh, cost build, but I try to make sure that all my infantry and tanks are uh, at the right veterancy, so they're spent, because they're like more general tools that you will apply all the time. Well, um, helicopters air uh, tab and artillery are things that you want to have if you need them no matter what it doesn't really matter if they're like the exact precise co cost efficiency yes I'm like cost of bleeding try is something that really in fact we it's just so much more efficient if you get a veterancy level it's like if you go too deep with the numbers, then you just will lose the fight, and it doesn't matter how deep you are when you're losing the fights in the first 10 minutes, because 
unions are just worse. And veterans in one is insanely strong. Definitely the first take from train to veteran. That is a huge buff. Yeah, but even with, like the the second tick, like rid of fire, also uh, and and stress resilience are big things, especially stress resilience because also the Malis on the other side when you get stressed are big as well. Like yeah. the, those accuracy and rid of fire. I think you could uh, hit up to is it seventy five percent reduced uh, accuracy and rate of fire with the lowest cohesion. Something uh, like that, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, quite important to uh, ensure that uh, if your units are really stressed, pull them back and let them uh, take a chill pill. I've got word that the next matchup is 82nd versus 3rd US. I wouldn't box is playing 82nd and Phoenix are playing 3rd US. That is an interesting matchup. Do, like the the big question is, can you survive the early game as third? Because if you can, you can play it eighty second out relatively efficiently in the long run. So the play that eighty second obviously has is beating you in the skies and then beating you de to death with, hel to, with helicopters. But both sides have the F fifteen. So the big question is there: who can win that F fifteen fight <laughs> as well for the late uh. game? From looking at the airplane of uh, airplane of last game, I think uh, a wooden box uh, is the likely contender to take this game. Uh, 80 second also suits a more aggressive playstyle than 39 does. Well, the only airplane we saw from a wooden box last game was his SU-27 flying in and dying. So I don't know if that's the, like his A setup it was decent, but he doesn't have those long range A assets now. So we'll see how he does with shorter range systems and. I don't think a wooden box has the helicopter micro of Karma. Like 80 second is, but I mean you have at least a couple of uh, Apaches on the other side as well. But 80 second is so scary if you have those micro controls with the altitude changing and so on that Karma showed. Also but, the A10 macro, if that's on point, uh, it can be yeah, absolutely devastating. I've been on the receiving end of uh, Karma's uh, 80 second. Uh, once too many, and uh, if you can effectively target your opponent's AA quite early in the game when they haven't massed a lot, you can easily wipe it with one single A10 and just take the game from there. Yeah, but F15s are somewhat okay in dealing with A10s. Like that's that's the thing. Like you have a fighter that is fast enough, has long range enough, and good enough missiles that they are capable of killing an A10 if you use them correctly. So. We'll see. It will be an interesting game, but it can be over in a absolute landslide within the first five minutes. Like the forward deployment advantage and the general advantage when it comes to infantry, and the better co early game cost efficiency that you get in eighty second for sure is scary. Like third needs its time to get assembled, get enough Bradleys out, get enough. Um, M ones out maybe as well, and get those expensive airplanes, helicopters, artillery pieces. Yeah. They need twenty minutes to get online. Yes, usually. Uh, that's... The game is up. Uh, the trap that you can fall into with eighty second though uh, is uh, you can become too aggressive. Uh, the thing about airborne divisions is that you need to do the land grab and then sit back. You can't continue to be overly aggressive because you don't really have anything to follow that aggression up with. Your tools are really good at letting your opponents come to you uh, while you lose a lot of uh, uh, defensiveness if you're not in buildings or forest lines. The reason why the I t in my chat was the question was why the Ito instead of the Toe 2 was taken. Uh, against T62s, you don't really need Toe 2s. Ito's are pretty Did you scary. play your game against uh, uh, Ski Tanner? Or is it tomorrow? Oh, yeah, that, that is a matchup as well. Right, right. 
I forgot that we had that legendary German feud between friends coming up in the week number one. A bit un anticlimactic. I hoped that we would get in that in week number three, but Henry versus he should be a really interesting match as well. <laughs> we'll have to unplug his Victoria 3 access. DDoS uh, his uh, Steam account. <laughs> yeah, Wiki 3 got me a bit as well. I played quite a bit of that lately. Oman World Power, highest GDP Ooh. in the world. I <laughs> wooden box is doing almost a similar lineup as he did with his 39 with the scouts. Mm, but it's a bit further forward. And a lot of airborne's joining them for a push into golf. And yeah, I think that's that's a good idea. Like the, having the infantry advantage pushing into golf can be quite nasty to deal with for Phoenix. We have some toe twos in the middle that can Ah, if, would you put it that far forward, the Totu, or would you put it into the I guess we're getting aggressive plays down at the bottom. Uh, oh, you rotated the other way around, okay. And quite a conservative uh, hold in the top part of the map. Yeah, I also believe that this matchup is going to be more interesting. Yeah. Uh, this is also a more uh, execution-heavy matchup. If uh, a wooden box doesn't execute properly, he will lose just because he gets outscaled from uh, Phoenix. Ooh, Phoenix going in with the Phoenix going in with the triple Apache is also really interesting. Uh, I tried that against uh, Derek once. Wouldn't recommend it. No, I, I not against 82nd. <laughs> like, the Avenger is a pretty nasty beast when it comes to killing helicopters. With a uh, fire. Al also, the placement of his uh, Apaches are way too far up. Those are going to die long before they're going to be able to uh, stop to the vehicle and fire. Yeah, you don't really need them to stop the enemy from getting into the center of the map. You need to stop them from getting your CVs and getting yep. your CV spots so holding them above golf holding them the edge of Bravo is I would like to see them at least 2,000 meters further back and if the wooden box can kill the three Apaches early on and doesn't have to worry about Apaches anymore in the late game then it makes his pushes and his considerations also way easier so, yeah. that will be interesting. Uh, uh, I think uh, Phoenix is going to get absolutely wrecked in golf uh, at the opener. Yes. Looking my... at uh, both uh, both players' placement of units, uh, with the ACAV being slow, and Phoenix have shown that he isn't deploying, or keeping an eye on them and deploying them early uh, if they're getting into dangerous spots. I think this can be a quite a quick game by the deployment so far. Yeah, this could be over really, really quickly. But I mean, we, there's still a good amount of forces left to deploy for Phoenix. So we'll see. Do you think there will be... Wait, the amount of units that the wooden box has on the field. There is room for a plane, right? Like there. Uh, there is, yeah. And the F-15 flying around, killing... I Apaches. think it's actually room for two planes. If my math isn't horrible. Oh, but it... No, he has, no, he has two Avengers. Never mind. It's only one plane. Uh, I'm curious as to where the Brad is and where the M-113s are from uh, Phoenix. Because he clearly has invested into two F-15s. And I think that's a really bad move. Yes. Yeah, there they go. There's just uh, nothing on the other side for them to kill. And there's nothing for them to spot. This is... Oh boy, this is a terrible move. Oh, don't fly over, don't fly over. Oh, no, 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 no. Oof. Well, at least now he knows what's up for his Apaches. But there's just no front line. 
Like he has yeah. He has five scouts and eight caps, which means they're slow. A10 coming in from the get go as well. Oh boy, is this ballsy. Like, he has redirected a couple of his uh, apaches at least. And then A10. Oh my god. <laughs> Do or die. <laughs> like, yeah, his scouts need to see things. Oh, oh it's AKF? Nice a hit. A a MVP, MVP. Absolute MVP. If it can get the Avenger in the north. No, it's it's quite out of uh, slightly out of range. Oh my god, that would have been massive. Oh, the A10 just barely missed the Avenger. It's going for a second Ooh. run. Oh. Oh. oh! You need to use the main gun! Oh, and F15 oh. coming on on the other side, but the other F15 oh. is behind it. Gets the kill! Kill for oh, kill. Two, oh, two but Avengers the A10 goes, goes down! The A10 goes down. The Avenger still has some more shots in it. Now it's out of ammo. So the Apaches will just bully it. Because the 50 cal shouldn't be enough. Yeah. Avenger in the north, down to four shots. This is a wild game. The, the front oh, line this units, is great. <laughs> the frontline units of the wooden box are all dead. The, the Apaches, they the take. This is actually working out, isn't it? Especially it if is. the Avenger is missing if on... It... Oh my god! Okay, it gets one. But it only has one missile left, so it won't be able to kill the other one. The question now is, what does Phoenix do with this? I mean, the, the way bigger question is, what does a wooden box do with this now? I mean, there's there's just nothing on the ground. Like, there's two ATOS coming in. That's a good move, because the Apache is out of line. But, okay, it's it's going to retreat now. And it's faster than the ATOS, so you can just run away. Or oh, it's the same speed, actually. The, the key thing now is that Phoenix set himself in good defensible positions. Don't be over-aggressive now. You snowball this game by being passive and defending your position and allowing a force build-up. You can't be denied that now. So if you take a calm for 10 minutes, get the Bradleys in, get a couple tanks in, then you can just finish this game. Avenger in the south should be able to finish the job. Oh, Apaches didn't move fast in far enough. Apache Oh, it's, it's landing? No, 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 that's not the right spot to land with the AT fire teams around. Oh no, this Apache is dead. Oh, wow, the Avenger used up eight missiles. Only it hit could it finish twice. it off with his uh, heavy machine gun. I think that's going to happen. Yeah. The unfortunate tumble there for the Apache. What I'm fearing now is what I'm seeing, like the uh, ATAS is. Uh... If they're able to mop up the scouts, we're in a position where both players lost all their forces on opener. Yeah, but the ACAV will get the pin there. Oh, and... oh, oh, it's not a AT scout. If the ACAV is able to snipe that Avenger, that's huge. Yes. I... What is Abun most trying to do? Where's that ATAS going? Oh boy. Two yeah, ATS getting the kill onto the ATSs. Hats off to uh, Phoenix Red Opener. I did not expect that to work. That was uh, all the balls of the world with this little on the ground. Like, if your scouts get sniped there, you are just dead in the water. You don't see anything. Avengers can't circle around you. But. Yeah, it worked out perfectly. Like, this is a commanding position. Getting points. Like, I mean, the CVs are a bit early now. I would have liked to see more frontline units before that. Yeah, same. But that also means that the wooden box can't get ahead of you in points. So you, it is the wooden box who has to push out now for the rest of the game now. Uh, I'm having a really hard time seeing how a wooden box is going to pull this back. I also don't know how. Like, the advantage that you have at 80 seconds is getting crowned in the early game, and all the ground is lost. Like, there's there's nothing of it left. Outside of one airborne. I, I wouldn't box reacted uh, wrongly by trying to contest the air, because he didn't have any helicopters, so there were no reason for him to contest those F 15. Rather than investing that in ground units and AA, I think that would have been a better call, but that's hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. Well, the big issue is that he also lost all his infantry before his uh, Avengers were able to deal with the helicopters at all. 
like his his infantry movement against the Apaches was a bit off as well. And maybe he lacked one Avenger at the start as well. Like one more Avenger would have made a world of difference there. But as uh, Thunder, as Thunder is pointing out though, one A ten is down, one A fifteen is down, and two Apaches are down. Uh, so um, uh, the early victory has come at a great cost for Phoenix. Uh, the question now is, is I it mean, huge enough for a wooden box to actually get back into it? He killed off an F-15 on the other side as well, though. Like, it's yeah, not like he is just super outnumbered in the air. Yes, the A-10 is down, but the A-10 is an AT A-10 anyways. It's not like you need it for killing many tanks in the late game. And I'm of the belief that this is Phoenix game to win at the moment. He... Yeah, he has everything lined up for him now. I, I can't see how you're throwing this. Or rather, how a wooden box is supposed to bring this back. Like, helicopter play out of... Like, comma plus something there is necessary. I have, this I have one way to get back into this game, and it's called CV sniping. And what? He, he, Phoenix is likely to have eight CVs in his deck at, at the maximum. More likely seven, four infantry and uh, three C uh, four uh, vehicles and uh, three infantry. If a wooden box is able to kill all seven of those, it's possible. I see no other way than that. You always have a tank CV in your. The, the tank CVs come so cheap in the US. Your tank slots are all so cheap. So I'm pretty sure he has a tank CV as well there, or maybe even two. That's the only way I'm seeing this unravel for Phoenix. I mean, yeah, it had 500 points. And... Oh, that <laughs> Avenger is in a bad position. Is this? Yeah, M67 military police are so strong. I'm be coming in on the other side. M1A1 will easily bully. All the infantry there as well. Dragon 2 is not doing too too much to that frontal armor. So. I'd also like to see that Phoenix, Phoenix is actively pushing uh, a wooden box out this time around. He is realizing what position he is in and taking it slow and just grinding him back out. Okay, we have if the first A10 on the battlefield. More AA is needed. More stairs need to be around for Phoenix. Oh. He has spotted the uh, backline airborne. I'm. I, I got a question, Phoenix. Though, why is he bringing in uh, Kiowa with Hellfire missiles against 80 seconds? Yeah. Why yes, you have the M1A1 P Abrams, but uh, I think that's a bad judgment call. It's a 155 points helicopter that can get blown out of the skies very easily. Oh, a desperate A10. It's down. Oof. No way in the skies on the other side. And yeah, that's what I said. Like, F-15 can clean up the eight hands. Yeah. Like, and without AA and without F-15 of, of your own, you don't do this. You can't bring out your F A eight hands without support from the ground. This is... all on Phoenix, just to not lose it. I mean, this game might be over in the next 5 to 10 minutes if Phoenix keeps on trading like it does. I mean, there's nothing to stop the M1A1 in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I'm questioning uh, a wooden box calling of an M1P uh, in the bottom as well. Yeah, that uh... is an interesting choice. I mean, the aggression there is somewhat... does not make sense. One or two more stingers with it I, would make me more comfortable with that airborne and M1IP push. Yeah, that's uh, why I'm uh, doubting it, because he's completely lacking air defenses. Phoenix could really bring out that second A-10 and start uh, wrecking uh, chaos on his tanks. More M1IPs. Okay, also, yeah, trying to fight M1A1s with M1IPs is a bad choice in my eyes as well. Like, the difference there is good enough for the it M1A1. The two pen plus the range plus the accuracy is huge. Yeah, it's basically three more penetration on the M1A1. That's the difference between taking ten shots and taking three shots. 
on the, in the tank battle. Center. Yeah, Dragon's also not good enough to deal with M1A1, so, or Bradley for that matter, really. Like, even Bradley's can take two of those. So... Phoenix is starting to clean up uh, a wooden box's uh, backline action with Apaches now. F15 coming in, though, to try to hunt that down. There's no A in the north. So. Yeah, but you're never gonna want to pass an Apache with a uh, Vulcan based uh, fighter. Especially not if you don't hit your missile. Even if you hit it, it should be left at 2 HP. You need to hit 2 missiles. Oh, and that's a risky it's head it's on it. Oh my god. That went pretty well for Phoenix so far. And that, yeah, wooden boxes F15 is now pretty dead in the skies there. And there's still missiles left on the other. What is Phoenix? What, what the hell, Phoenix? What was that control? Oh my god. Oh, I wouldn't work. Please call it off. Please call it off. It doesn't oh, have missiles no. anymore, my man. It doesn't have... You're not going forward with just Vulcans, are you? It's uh, madness. And, uh, and with the cohesion, you're Ooh. unlikely to kill stuff. Oof. And next F-15 comes in. Yeah, no, this is... That was a questionable air micro from both sides, <laughs> in my eyes. <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> Why don't you just go for the head on there? Yeah, the guy's down to two hit points and is on no cohesion whatsoever, so its missiles are likely to... By left, right, and center. Uh, I would have surrendered at this point if I was a wooden box. There, I, I don't see a way back into this game. Yeah, not without. You needed to win an air battle here. You really needed yeah. to get a decisive victory and in the air. E e even though we lost the initial fight, which is really bad, a wooden box have made several questionable moves after that, which has uh, made the situation even worse. And mm -hmm. Phoenix have capitalized on it. Yes, the, I mean, the, the, the center. We just saw wooden boxes start, you know, die lately. Like, M1A1s were mopping up infantry left and right. The Apache didn't do much. It just went And down. if you look down at the Gulf now, uh, a wooden box is an infantry fighting against military police, which is nice enough. But he already knows that he has lost uh, infantry to the Apache, and now it's coming back again to clean up. So it's, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, which you saw last time as well. Yeah, no nice thing are there. Myself, you do that sometimes, but uh, especially in tournament games, you need to keep your head clear and take that breather. And the single stinger is not enough air defense. Like, yeah. that phantom now took some damage, yes, but it will be around later again. Stingers are only useful in two, ca in two cases. When you mass them up, three or four, or if you uh, use them as filler uh, as a, or an AA between, uh, for example, uh, the Avenger or Vulcan. Yeah, exactly. Or as assists for your dogfights. Like, yeah. swinging around dogfights is also something they can do. Oh, but... we got a uh, flanking Kiowa. Yeah, so Kiowa is <laughs> just, just such a bad flanking unit with their oh, four is, points. Is it going to take down the Apache that's landed with his Hellfire missile? How is the spear oh, not oh, in line of sight there? Ooh, oh. Last second. That stinger needs to move one building back. Come on, a wooden box. That, oh. that that's that's a good thing about the hellfires, though. They're really uh, quick missiles. Uh, as a wooden box now, I would just move my Apaches to stand beside Kiowa and let the auto cannon kill it. I mean, the, the oh, stinger can just move. He has a stinger there. What's oh, eagle gets it? I think I think a wooden box is tilted beyond reason at the moment. Okay, gets the F15 though, but. Yeah, getting that fight back will be tough. I mean, somehow oh. Phoenix lets oh. Wooden Box up in points again. Another hit by a Stinger on the F-15. That is big. That F-15 is out for a while now. If it should be out for at least five minutes now. That leaves a five minute room for uh, a Wooden Box to do something with his Heavy Hogs. And a Wooden Box is close to a draw again. Like that should be a draw again in points. Yeah. So... It's a tough order to keep the defense uh, up against 3rd US for another 25 minutes. But I think that could be what you're trying to aim for, you know. If I was Phoenix now, I would just grab all my units and do an attack move forward. 
there's no reason to hold up anymore. You have Bradley's on the map, you have uh, Abrams on the map, you have air defenses, you have scouts, you have everything you need to do combined arms. I mean, and that's what uh, we're kind of seeing in the north of A right now. The wooden yeah. box, Heavy Hawk might play against it is nice, but the supply is not there right now. Which... You, you only have 16 missiles and you usually dump 8 to 10 on one infantry squad. So just to share amount of time you need to spend on reloading it and stuff like that gives so much room to grab land uh, for Phoenix. Yes, and Woodenbox has supply trucks, but he, they're not moving there. At, ah, he can. also managed to snipe the M1, A1 at the bottom part of Bravo. Yeah, with his own IP, right? That came from the yeah. side? Yes. So that is good. But, I mean, that's 23 more minutes of doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. This won't stop. And without having a major air advantage, and the other side still I, having Chapralts and Stingers around everywhere as well. I, I would have kept the Airborne back on that hill if I was a, a wooden box. Because then, uh, if Phoenix wants to bring in his... Uh, Infantry fighting vehicles and tanks, they have to go over that hill and into the line of fire of the AT weapons. Uh, if you move into the open, it leaves room for uh, Phoenix to uh, use it at his advantage against you. Heavy Hawks are around again, but Chapral and Stingers moved up in the rear bit as well. Bradley's going down in numbers as well, though. Like, yeah, Phoenix, this attack move currently not working out. Kiova Warrior. Gets microed against the, as well by a wooden box, so... This... We're close to a collapse on the top side of Bravo, though. Uh, the M1-1P uh, against a Law and a Bradley inside the forest is gonna end badly for a tank. Oh, are we getting a side shot from... Ooh. That's a lot oh, of... Oh, that it... is gonna get side shotted. Yeah, there yeah. was a lot of Bradley's firing in their totus there. And yeah, with that, there's little left here. The helicopters try to s scramble together in the rear. But there's enough AA moving up as well with pivots and stingers to keep those heavy hawks away from the front line. But the Thunderbolt is coming in from for the flank as well. Seat F-16 is the air defense that is being called in against it. Which is interesting to see seat planes in this matchup. Because Pivots is the only plane that you use them against here. And it's not like Pivots are that much of a threat in the first place. Also really enjoy this A-10 Colin. Because now Phoenix can really see in what the bad... Why are you calling it out again? Where are you making it? I mean... It just got hit once more by the Stinger, so... Pulling it yeah, out but he it. evac'd it before he got hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. But in the end, it might have been the right call. <laughs> like... Yeah, but the thing is, he just flew over uh, the enemy zone in the middle and got shot up by two Stingers, meaning that he could easily call in his AJ Bomber that we know he has, because he already used it 10 minutes ago, and bomb the last Stinger, and then you can just mop up with A-10. But it doesn't really matter at this moment, does it? Like... Uh, that, that That's true. With the pivot M1A1 push in the south, Charlie is just open for grabs now as well. Like that forest will fall. Ah, the airborne push in the center gets He's a couple of units again, but it's this is so vulnerable to one HE bomber, and it that pushes over. Yeah. The Stingers and Avengers will get kills on planes, but not after they do their job. They can trade back, but they can't, can't stop it. Yes. So having four airborne's just on top of each other is really risky, and yeah, that, that Avenger has to be careful. Can't move. Ph Phoenix really needs to stop sending one and one unit after each other into that, though. He just needs to pull back those uh, military police. Where is that bomber going? Okay, he's using it in the middle instead. Which is fair enough. Yes, if you can get Bravo, the other side has to not just contest golf, but actually has to capture it fully to get a take on you again. Which... Yeah, and if you take Bravo completely, you also so much stop the reinforcement lane uh, of uh, the attack on golf. 
Yes, then the enemy has to go really long road north. Finger on the other side. A lot of units for Phoenix still around. Bravo, but on the other side, it's really only the CV left there. So he really needs to stop sending them into the grinder, though. Those uh, M113 is an AK. He's gonna die. Same with the fire team, though. At the same time, though, he needs to be more aggressive in Bravo. I mean, Bra it's really yeah. just one fire team now left. Or one Air airborne dragon, that is. But the only other unit, or the actual only unit right now in the zone for wooden box is the CV. That's all there is. But Phoenix has five, six infantry units directly in front of it, together with some tanks. I would like to see Phoenix now just pull that M151 mud CP, just pull it out of the zone completely. Yes, you will lose the tick for some seconds, but you won't lose the unit and the points, and then you can put it back again when you recapture the zone. I think uh, keeping the CV in the zone is one of the greediest things you can do. Uh, the CVs both are scarce uh, units and they cost a lot. Uh, it... Oh, the snipe on the stingers! But the military police unload is terrible. Oh my god, that is way too far forward. No. Ooh, those will die. Apache trying to come around, but there's still an Avenger. Oh, that oh, might not no, work no, out. No, 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 no. Oh, that was <laughs> at the last possible second. Apache, though, getting kill on at least one airborne. Oh, two airborne will die there. That's the fifth squad of airborne. Um... I wouldn't box as lost to that, that Apache now, at the same spot. Avenger is around, but with 20 ECM, might even lose that fight against the Apache. No, okay. Apache running out of ammo. But the second one is around, and that gets the Avenger. And the Stinger, on its own, has too low of a reload rate to deal with these Apaches. Yeah, gets a hit, but doesn't get the stun. And now the Apache can kill it in return, if it gets on target. Doesn't do so, but the stinger misses. But Phoenix really needs to realize that he needs to attack in the middle now. I mean, he has his infantry now pushed in there. The CV is under fire. The CV will die to that airborne en engineers. Or not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's within the min range of the ATGM on the second one. There we go. <laughs> or oh, not. <laughs> Two dragons <laughs> missing like that. Quite unfortunate. But that CV oh. won't stay alive for in there for much longer. Why isn't it driving down to the forest? <laughs> because it this can't is take a line of desperate... sight up there. And if it moves into the forest, it gets slowed down for a slight bit, and then might die in while in that phase. I think oh. the movement is fine, but okay, okay, moving it towards the M1A1 like that is really playing with fire. I would advocate for getting it out of the zone again because you don't want that point loss. It's better to take the loss in uh, capture points. Is it though right now for a uh, wooden box? Because he has the tick at the moment and keeping the tick up for any amount of time right now is kind of the way in here. And somehow he keeps the CV alive. Building up a 100 point cushion right now, which is not a lot, but it is at least a bit of a sliver of hope here for this whole movement but also bringing in some infantry cvs in the, around golf that could allow for some more ticks later on in the game the ballsiest cv placement i've seen in my life it's just literally 10 meters out of line of sight for that tank just parking it in front of the m1a1 m1a1 <laughs> will now try to kill the m1ip and will just drive over the humvee on the way there Okay, how are we trying to disengage there? Oh. It's getting spotted now. Yeah, dragon. Might be the target though. Oh! Yeah, it's oh! the, the dragon is getting the respond, and the Humvee can move away again. <laughs> just out of range. This is some serious uh, parking. Uh... But yeah, now it's out. There we go. Yeah. 
See, we will get into golf, so it will only be a plus one for a while. But that CV also shouldn't survive for too long. The next HE bomber will come around for that airborne leader. And uh, the reason why I advocated for taking it out is because even though we can keep it alive for a couple more minutes, if you take it out, that's uh, 100 points you can spend on two infantry squads uh, defending it when you put it back in because it's 40 minutes left of the game. If it had been two or three minutes, I would agree with you a bit running around. But in the long game, saving your CVs are more important uh, than getting those extra uh, 100 capture points. Oh, abs usually absolutely. Like, But even at this point of wooden box, I don't know if there's a safe way of ever getting it back in if you once you pull it out. So keeping it those couple seconds extra in there, you n might never get it back in there again. And this way you could play for golf now with a slight point advantage and try to get a equilibrium that way and getting to a draw. Uh, which seems to be the play right now, but it's not working out. Avenger is too far back and the Apache can up and can come up and bully the CV and the airborns once more. Too many airborns dying up there before the Avenger is around. And yeah, this is this is it. Yeah. I believe we're getting a surrender at any moment now if that CV dies. Yes, a wooden box is also under pressure by Phoenix's engineered dragons elsewhere. Yeah. It's collapsing uh, on the whole front at the moment. And that is an interesting outcome. And one draw and one victory here. Phoenix being the first one to win with a 3 1 in points. I hadn't had that so far. What's the match points he gets then? Does he still get the same if he like nope. if he won two games, or is it three points? It's it's three one. Like it, you still get oh, the okay. victory, but uh, in a tiebreaker scenario, you have lo le fewer map points. I see, I see. So the draw still is worth something for a wooden box. There, the surrender is. Interesting matchup. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm still baffled how that Apache rush actually succeeded. Yes, that double uh, Apache. Uh, there uh, du double there has to be said that those Avengers uh, had drugs and wine earlier on the day because they were missing quite a lot. I mean, uh, initially. Apaches have 20 ECM and they also shot a lot on that 15s with 40 ECM, so. Avengers should be 70% accuracy before the ECM if you take the regular build with the two up it. Uh, so if you saw the one missing eight shots on the Apache, or it hit one but missed seven. No, it, it uh, hit stuff two like times. that is really bad luck and affected the game quite heavily. But I do admire the balls of Phoenix for doing that. And uh, as we can see on the kill speed, his Apaches they did a lot of uh, lifting. Yeah, the, the the early one and a half minutes is just oh my god, is that brutal? <laughs> like the only thing in there is that one F fifteen kill, but even then the eagle of uh, wooden box didn't get out either, so that was still a trade there. <laughs> like the first two minutes, <laughs> oh boy, that KD is just really really. My, my, my jaw dropped when <laughs> when the dust. Uh... Uh, like finally went off from that initial play. Yes, it was. I mean, I don't think that it was what a wooden box expected either. Like, uh, you won't expect to get rushed as eighty second when you're playing as against third U.S. armored. Then you need therapy if you do that. If you expect that, that's uh, something uh, which was quite a clever play of uh, Phoenix to do. Uh, one thing I that could have turned it around maybe would have been a supply truck for with the Avengers because then yeah. that center Avenger would have killed more of the Apaches. I also think the responding F fifteen was bad because a wooden box didn't have uh, helicopters of his own that he needed to defend, meaning that uh, Phoenix basically had spent five hundred and fifty points, which isn't affecting the game currently because you can't really ground attack with F-15s because they're firing too fast and their uh, main gun isn't doing that much damage. Uh, if you had invested in the second wave 
I know he invested into Avengers, but he sent it to the side where he didn't have units for some reason, or he had a, only a couple of infantry units. We had sent those down middle or to Golf, uh, and pair that up with a couple more infantry squads uh, instead of that F-15. I think he could have hold on to the ground he initially lost. Mm. Because Phoenix only had scouts. That's absolutely true, yeah. And like, that F-15 was a bit of a panic move. That wasn't quite necessary. So losing the, that amount of airborne to the patches was really the, the biggest issue. Like, the front line was just gone in the center before even any reinforcements could have arrived there. Yeah. By the way, how did your... You also played earlier today, right? Yeah. How did your game uh, go? 2-0 against the Tofuk. Yeah, okay. Nice. Uh, second game, I almost lost. I tilted myself beyond reason <laughs> for the first fifteen minutes before I pull, twenty minutes before I pulled it back again. Okay. Uh, so the second game is quite interesting, actually. Nice. And a lot of good games have been played, and a lot of good content has been made as well. Like the amount <laughs> of league, con I think don't think we had ever this much content for any league that in the first couple of days, like with Kama, you. Uh, hippie, and then also uh, attack power, Vulcan. Tango, and obviously Vulcan motherfucking gaming. Have you got a word around that I tilted him quite hard in ranked already? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I gave him the full SPG 9 treatment. Okay, yeah, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't worry about such manners anymore because since today he's officially sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. So <laughs> he just and he uh, will throw money at you next time. We have to worry about have, getting some issues with money. Uh, with yeah, getting uh, he, maybe trying to buy with the reason now that he is a Raid Shadow Legends billionaire. But yeah, we'll see. I but also you... want you to take a look at the kill fit, by the way, before we move on. I'm, if you look at uh, the one first one and a half minutes, yeah, exactly. That's what I've said. Like, there's only one red thing in there. <laughs> like, no, but if if you actually look at what's lost, it isn't that much. It, it might sound dumb, but take take away all the vehicles. Yeah, but but Humvees are still that's still one hundred. It's points. still points, but there's a one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight actual combat units that died. And uh, four of those are the Hummy scout vehicle. That means that Wilmok still has a lot left that didn't get killed by the Apaches. But only in the north. Like, his, his, his the only forces he had, or oh, in the south, from your perspective, I think it was, like, all his center units were dead at this point. Like, they died within the worst, first. Two center minutes. point collapsed completely, I agree with that. But he had on both um, the Gulf side uh, got wiped out a bit later, and the north side. I need to watch that replay to figure out exactly what happened. It was a really weird game for sure. Also, the fact that the A-10 soaked up quite a lot of uh, missiles from the Avengers that uh, the Apaches wouldn't take. Yeah, that was a good. I, I don't know if it was a planned, but it was a good play <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like just. Making the enemy run out of ammunition and then bullying them with those Apaches. Because they kept on wrecking kills. And then the, the nail in the coffin was the Atas play. Having two Atas run into the uh, into AKFs and just dying to the 50 kills. That was pretty brutal. Because I liked the Atas idea. And like with the Atas in good position, you can zone out the, the Apaches pretty well. Allow your airborns to move forward, but yeah, losing them to 50 cults. I mean, that's in general at the moment the issue with all unarmored helicopters. Yeah, <laughs> none of MGs and armored for that sake. 50 cults are so effective against helos. Yeah, but with with uh, armored helicopters, you often still can get them out. It's super annoying still, but they get like any. They often survive, but they yeah. have heavily damaged. Yeah, I get what you mean. With me eights or 
any Cobras. They just drop so quickly at the moment. So yeah, can't wait for changes to that. Hope we get the next pe patch this upcoming week. I hope. I'm hoping for a patch either on Monday or a Tuesday. I'm so <laughs> tired of the T55 spam. We won't get one on Monday. You did never patches on Monday, but yeah. A man is allowed to believe. <laughs> Tuesday or Wednesday is where we. Yeah. Uh, I, I would expect one. Let's see. I need to upload the matches. So yeah, I think my uh, Discord wasn't working earlier, but Tanner and Ski are playing tomorrow, or what did they say in your shit? Tanner is gonna try to get Ski to play tomorrow, but he needs to get him uh, ripped off that Victoria tree hook. Oh yeah, I got hooked by that as well. Because... Uh, I find the game uh, surprisingly enjoyable if you put Netflix on as well. <laughs> like you have something, uh, there's a bit too much menu hunting for my taste at the moment, but if you have a good like side show like Brooklyn Nine-Nine or something like that going on the side, which you don't really need to pay attention to, but which is nice to have, uh, I find the hours just flew by. Yeah, also, I played with a couple of friends. Like... Yeah. Three three guys sitting on Friday in the lobby, just playing on, and it was like, oh yeah, wait, it's three a.m. How did we get here? Just flew by. Everyone talking about what's going on in the world, making funny jokes about that time period. My Mexico becoming <laughs> uh, uh, keeping the Californian coast away from the Americans, bullying a bit the natives, and. Creating its own custom union and so on, but yeah, it's I mean it's an early game paradox game. It will need some, some I... love, some fleshing out. But in w one year, this should be really on the top end of paradox games for me. Yeah, I uh, I think it has great potential, uh, but I think it needs that two years of paradox love before it uh, gets anywhere. I mean, by now, CK three is really really good, and yeah, give Victoria 3 the same amount of time and this game should be quite enjoyable. I liked the combat system surprisingly much. Like, I found it surprisingly <laughs> fitting. Like, it has its weaknesses. It will, it obviously, it, I'm not saying it's it's perfect or anything, no, no, nowhere close, but I enjoyed it <laughs> way more than what we had in Victoria 2. Like, that micromanagement just doesn't fight the time, fit the time period. Nice. I find the um, war system in itself okay enough, but all all the things that surrounds the war system, I find it so confusing. Like, why aren't all my units attacking? Why are uh, suddenly just six people of my army of hundred attacking? Why are uh, uh, why can I only in the initial uh, conquest statement take one state? Uh, why can't I say that I want? Uh, all the northern parts of French from France. Why can I only take like Normandy or something like that? All those things I find confusing in the war part of the game. Yeah, yeah. It, as I said, it needs a lot of tinkering. Like a friend of mine had yesterday a situation where he declared war on a landlocked country and he just couldn't create a front line after he declared war and stuff like that. Like he couldn't invade them. <laughs> <laughs> I also got a message from uh, chat to Jane uh, Sarbus and Rabbit Squirrel are uh, playing tomorrow as well. Nice. Yeah, a lot of stuff happening tomorrow, but because we also have the group drawing for Steel Division to happening tomorrow. But Ooh. let's see, get that in. Yeah, getting joined by Vulcan and Attack Power and uh, El Bowser for that. So that should be a nice event as well. Like in general, I will be pretty busy the next couple of weeks. So much, so much content. Next week, the next Friday night Warno. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah. Nebulous got a new patch, which is really looking good as well. And we have a tournament for that next Saturday. So, yeah. But Warno League is we had really good games so far. Like that. Calm, those Kama games. I mean, they had to. Expected outcome, but it was closer than I expected as well. Like it was not as much of a storm. 
Uh, Karma isn't that stompy of a player in uh, the sense that he will wreck you in the first 10 minutes of a game, but he just slowly like takes the air out of the match and like pushes you into those bad trades over and over again. Uh, so by the time the game has like gotten to the 30 35 minutes point, you either lack anti air or ASFs or tanks, or you lack like one component and then you just get smacked. Yeah, also, Karma, uh, his infantry macros was just so superior to Yasp's. Like, that's how the games went down most of the time. Like, Yasp just lost every infantry fight, and then the game was over. <laughs> but yeah, Phoenix winning 3-1. to one. Interesting result. We'll see if that that's... plays a role in the end, that 3-1. to one. <laughs> It certainly was unexpected from the initial deployment. Uh, I thought I wouldn't box it was going to take that. Uh... Also, you can really see that Phoenix practices, uh, plays a lot lately again, because he went in into Division 1 as the lowest ranked player, but yeah. he really wants to show good results, and you can see that in his ah. practice. Yeah, he's been uh, playing a lot. Uh, the thing about Phoenix is that he usually unravels in the long games, so he can, can slow it down and ensure that the game goes on. He usually gets uh, his ADHD kicks in, and uh, you can outfocus him. 